Hey, this is John Baisley from Baroness, and you're watching, listening to, or reading Loudwire. Hey everyone, it's Gruhamid here from Loudwire, and it truly does my heart good to say that I'm sitting next to John Baisley of Baroness, Finally back on the road again after this way. You want to do it? Yeah, all that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you guys finally back on a full North American tour. I, everyone, I think, is so excited. Uh, and you never really got to perform uh, yellow and green stuff in a full tour like this. So how's it been? How does it feel to finally play a bulk of that material? Um, it feels great. <laughs> We, we, I mean, this is what we wanted to do uh, initially, w w you know, after the record come out. So, you know, it may be a little too late, little too little too late, but uh, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing to, it's amazing to be alive and to be able to do this. And um, the, the fact that people have stuck around with us and, you know, there's still people coming out to shows and we're on a tour bus and everybody's happy and healthy and having fun. That's, you know, that's all icing. Yeah. And it really is an interesting dynamic when, you first begin to tour off an album that's over a year old when people are really starting to taste it in the US in person. Right. So how is that dynamic different than, you know, when you were introducing, you know, stuff from the red record, the blue record right away to this long wait now? Well, I mean, it's not as uh it's not as coordinated or organized or f uh predictable what we're doing right now. And, you know, as I said, the, the album is for listeners, you know, a year old. For us, it's, you know, it's almost two years old because, you know, we wrote the songs a long time ago. But, uh, you know, as far as our stage dynamic and, the you know, the, as far as what we do on stage is concerned, it's, it's kind of new. So we're still, you know, we still find out new things about the songs every night as we play them. And, you know, f in some sort of odd, you know, counterbalance, the material is familiar for a lot of the audience. Uh, but they're, it's sort of unfamiliar in a way for us because we're still working through a lot. You know, we're still playing these songs, you know, in their, in their initial states on stage. So uh, it's awesome because we, we get a little bit more encouragement from the crowd, a little bit more participation, and uh, y yet we still feel very fresh and, and very, you know, involved in what we do. And you've got... Uh basically 18 new songs to put into a set list and even when you're headlining that's a, that's a lot so how do you go about choosing which songs from yellow and green to put in uh the ones that we were able to learn in time for tour we play and we All play right. this we play every song that we collectively as a group know every night right you've got the new the new members so right uh, i guess how did you pick the songs to practice with with those guys um we picked the ones we like the best. I don't know the ones that the, the ones that they that, that that they learned happened to be the ones that we thought would be the you know the good choices. And I don't know. This, I don't know. I think that's kind of obvious. Like this this like if you know the if you know the material, some songs are more obviously suited for a stage than others, and those are the ones that we play. Cool and the hits. All right, and you know with a new drummer, a new bassist. Uh, so far in this tour, you know what new dynamic have those two guys brought to Baroness that's maybe new or unique? Well, they're completely different people and and players than the, than, than the former members, so it's it's kind of hard to say, it's kind of hard to pinpoint and say that it's, you know, it's one, one thing or, or another in particular, but uh, w one thing I, I will, n I have noted is the fact that when you essentially, you know, when 50% of your band is new, you get a little, you know, sort of kick in the pants from those guys because they are, you know, for them it's it's really fresh and it's like, you know, they're, you know, I think at the very beginning of the tour we're, you know, really there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of anxiety, so they're playing like, like a band does when it's young, you know, and doesn't quite know how everything works yet, and that's that's not that's not actually a fault. I think that's a really good thing. I think that's something that we as musicians lose through repetition 
with some of the freshness freshness and, ex- and excitement of playing these songs so we get the, we get a little bit of that from them and it's it's sort of an infectious stage dynamic so for us then it began it becomes almost like a new song and a new way to play it and that's you know it's one way to shake off the boredom and boredom i think in mu- in music boredom equals you know the death of creativity so yeah and i was actually lucky enough to be in philadelphia uh, when you went on stage with Converge, at that right on. I, was that your first? Th- that was your, like your first time back on stage since the crash. Mm, yeah, I think that was. Yeah. I, th- I think I'd been out of a wheelchair for yeah. two days at that point or something. So, wow. sort of hard to stand up. <laughs> but it was great. You know, you played with them uh, with Coral Blue. Yeah. And I remember you talking about in, in your speech before they they played. Oh, I gave a speech. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good speech. And you mentioned that their new album, uh, All We Love, We Leave Behind, was the record that reassured you that despite this crash, you still had that same love and passion for music that you had before. You were a bit worried that maybe that was gone after the crash. Um, so along with that record, have there been others after it that have given you that same feeling? Not necessarily after it but you know uh, when that 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 converge record came out around the same time as the most recent uh neurosis record came out and those records uh, you know as i said that sort of despite their uh the like you know sort of anger or angularity or abrasiveness of either of those bands despite that those were the you know those w- were for me in an apartment incapacitated barely able to move and in severe pain those were sort of beautiful records those are records that um on day you know th- those were records that were very inspiring on days where i didn't you know frankly see the point of you know even getting out of bed because it was kind of a chore and, and it, you know it came with difficulty and pain and uh, you know so there's there's things there are records that we all associate with certain times in our lives and i think that's a beautiful beautiful thing about music is it's it's like it's like taste or smell it, it instantly recalls uh these memories and uh f- you know for me that that those two records in particular remind me uh remind me now and reminded me then that i needed to get up and move forward and you know put all the put all the difficult stuff behind me because that's you know it was just it was it was and is kind of superficial uh in some regards some of it's a little deep you know more deeply seated than that but there's you know, there's no way to move through the turgid waters of life better than uh, m- by embracing and confronting those things that are difficult. Well, and Did I answered the question that you asked. I think I. S- oh, said something else. it was great. Sorry, whatever it was, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, obviously we can see that you're walking around now. You're doing okay. It seems like, and one one person that we haven't really heard about for a while is actually the bus driver. Um, he got hurt very badly, and there's been talk of of uh, him possibly facing legal replications for for the crash because well, he of did, safety he, issues. He did face legal. Uh, he was brought to trial by the British government uh, and found guilty and and suffered uh, nominal punishment for for his uh, safety negligence. We'll call it. Well, um, that's interesting because I had never seen that published anywhere. Did yeah, well, it was. Uh, it wasn't. We we're j- we're not trying to make. I mean, Norman Norman was a friend of ours before the crash happened, so we're not trying to make a big stink about uh, about what he's going through and his difficulties. I mean, that's his per- that's his personal thing. But the fact is, uh, the you know we've all we've all got you know we've all got our own little paths that we've taken since the accident and his has has been a tough one i'm sure i don't you know unfortunately i don't keep in touch with him but um you know i think he's i think and i hope that he's seen the worst of it at this point and he's he's moving forward as as the rest of us are uh do you know if he's been sentenced no no that's what i'm saying He, he he was fined not sentenced oh okay okay yeah he was fined there was talk about possible jail time a, a little while no ago. no no he was fined 365 pounds <laughs> 300 wow okay mm-hmm. how do you get that number all right uh well uh, and also the baroness relief auctions uh right you know a lot of people went to that a lot of great bands 
donated very important yeah. pieces of their career to, to try and help you. Yeah. Um, h how much has been raised? Is there a number? I yet? don't know the specific number. I, I, I didn't set up the relief. This was not right. a relief that I set up. This was not a relief that Pete set up. Uh, this was the, this was a relief that was set up by uh, our sound guy, uh, Loopy, and uh, a good friend of ours, Nathan, and uh, you know, with help from Relapse and, and you know, and everybody else out there, and all the, you know, all these bands, and the 100 percent of that benefit is going to the uh, the people involved in that crash, who are not in this band and who do not who did not have the same sorts of safety nets in uh, in their lives that we did, uh, meaning our, our roadies. Uh, our merchandise people, our tour manager, in, in every basically everybody who was working for us and who was our crew, who was our family, all of whom we love deeply, uh, they're the they're the beneficiaries of the of that relief fund because they they're the ones who had to go through this without a public spotlight, without public support, without you know a recognizable face or an email or you know an an interviewer or, or journalist talking to them. So that that was what they, that whole relief was for. Yeah. And uh, and last question for you. Uh, I remember when I talked to you very shortly after the crash, you said something that really resonated with me, and that's really stuck with me for almost a year now. And you said the most sensible way to move on is to seize the day. Uh, so how have you put that into practice since the crash? Well, I've spent every waking moment of my life trying to get myself better and ready to tour. Uh, you know, to that end, we... We effectively booked the tour that we are currently on months ago without a bass player, without a drummer, while I was still uh, in a wheelchair. And we used the idea of a tour and the, the, the concept of getting out and moving around as sort of a linchpin, you know, for me personally to move forward, but, but uh, you know, also for, for Pete and I to have something to uh, devote our energy to. And that's, that's all we've been doing. I mean, it's, to me, it, doesn't, it seems like the crash was yesterday. In fact, it was a year ago tomorrow um but i haven't spent any idle time in in the you know since since that since august 15th 2012 i haven't had a day off i've been working towards this moment here and then the next day and the next day and that's you know that's probably what i meant at the time that's certainly what i mean now you know we've got we we were given a, a reminder on how how short and finite the length of your life is, the length of your band is, and you know how uh, physically frail and fragile we are. And so, you know, given the given the fact that we were able to, you know, mend ourselves, relatively speaking, there's no time, you know, no time like the present to start, you know, getting the back back to it. And that's, you know, that's what we, that's what we do. I mean, you know, what? Why waste time? You know, we'll sleep and rest and take vacations when we're dead. This is we, we play music. It's it's a lifetime commitment. All right. Well, thank you so much for yeah, your time. Awesome to see you. Go see Baroness on tour. Pick up Yellow and Green. Do whatever you have to do to listen to this band because they fucking rule. Thank you. John Baisley. Thank you. Yeah.